Okay, so um, welcome everybody. My name is Amber Gagliardi. I'm a librarian here at the Middle Country Public Library. I do a lot of our crafting and gardening programs. So if you have been to one of those programs before, you may have seen me. Um, as I mentioned before, I really miss doing the in-person programs with everybody, but I am glad we at least have an option to get together and do this. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Danielle Butler at this time she's going to offer you the second uh, cake decorating program piping tonight. So welcome and enjoy. And as mentioned, if you have a question, feel free to ask it. And we'll also leave some time at the end to ask your questions as well. And if you're piping along, you can turn on your camera and we would love to see um, some of your newfound skills. Thanks, Amber. Um, my name is Danielle Butler. Uh, I am pleased to join you guys again tonight uh, for the second in our decorating series, a focus on piping. Um, I run an online bakery called the Bite Size Bake Shop. Um, I see some familiar names for those of you who were with us last week, last week welcome back. Um, everybody should have gotten a kit full of materials. Um, and in your kit, the bag that you picked up had uh, an instruction sheet. It had some yellow icing, a container of yellow icing. Um, it had a bag of green icing. It had a little star tip, a little plastic tip. And then inside your paper was, you gotta open it up, a piping bag and a, a round of parchment paper. So those are all of the items that we're gonna use tonight. This is gonna be a little bit of practice and a little bit of decorating. Um, I find that even, even now, so I've been, you know, baking and decorating since about 2013 was when I started the bake shop. Um, I still have to practice sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you get into a flow and you get into a rhythm and, you know, it's everything just works. And sometimes you just can't do it. I, you know, like my hands don't work sometimes, it's like trying to braid your your kid's hair like sometimes the braids go together no problem and sometimes like how do i how do i make these fingers work so know that you know even thousands and thousands of hours in i still practice so i find that parchment is the best place to do that on because you can practice you can scrape it off and you can put it back in your piping bag and you can keep practicing you'll find that as you're going through um this decorating process and and decorating in general the consistency of your icing is gonna make the biggest difference when you're trying to pipe. The, the both of the bags that you receive are um, like a medium stiff consistency because they're a prepackaged icing. Um, so that means that if I were to pipe them, they're gonna hold their face pretty well. So I put my, my, my spatula in and I pull up and see how it's holding that the, the point. It's not sinking back into itself. That's the minimum that you want for a piping. Um, if you had really intricate, delicate flowers um, or something that was uh, really hardy looking, you would want it to even stiffer icing than what I gave you. So what, how do we do that? How do you take an icing and you make it a different consistency? Well, if you need to make it thicker, you would add powdered sugar to it. And you can do that through a prepackaged icing. Feel free to go ahead and dribble some you know, sprinkles of powdered sugar in there. If it's too thick, you can add milk or a little bit of water and thin it out. And the challenge, of course, is that the more liquid you add to it, the thinner it's gonna get and then it's gonna get runny. So be very mindful of thickness or thinness and, and what you're trying to achieve. And that's why it's a good idea to practice first. So um, I find that with buttercream, I always do a couple of style pipes before I move my cake or my cupcakes just to make sure that I can get the rhythm down. Um, and if I'm doing a cake, I will also start on the back side. Um, so if you know, if you have your, your cake round and you know this section is gonna be the front, then I will start my piping on the back half so that if you do take a few times to get your rhythm down, it's in the back and no one will really know. Um, on your piping sheet, there are a couple of different designs. So you'll notice the first one, is called the rosette. And the second one is called the shell pattern. Now those are both gonna be made with this star tip. There we go. 
see that. So the star tip, little points on the end. And that will create that nice little indentation in our frosting. Depending on how we hold the bag with the, with the piping tip will be the, you know, the, the kind of pattern that we create will be the result of how we hold the bag. So there are piping tips. They come in every imaginable shape and size. They have big ones. They have fat circles. They have fat stars. They have um, leaf tips. They have long skinny tips. They have round tips for writing and polka dots. Um, they have more than you could ever imagine. And I find that I have, you know, I have a fair number of piping tips in my decorating wheelhouse. Uh, I tend to only use a few of them. Um, and I've learned that there are some things that you can do with the piping bag to achieve some of the same look without investing in the piping tip. So we'll talk about that with the green bag in a few minutes. Um, Excuse me, any questions as we're getting started? Does everybody have their a cake or cupcakes that they're gonna floss along with? Um, so that's what, where we're gonna start. I have two cupcakes and we have a one vanilla stand in my family and more chocolate stand. So that's why there's a different cupcake on my plate. My oldest doesn't really like chocolate. Can you imagine such a thing? Yeah, I don't even know if she came out of my body because how could you not like chocolate? Um, but anyway, so we're going to put, I'm just going to put a thin little base coat of icing on these cupcakes. And the base coat will serve as the anchor for our piping design. And it looks pretty. It will look a little bit more finished. But we're mostly going to cover the cupcake or your cake up. So if you haven't yet added a base coat of icing to your cake or cupcake, go ahead and do that. And then we're going to set them aside while we press our pastry bag. The icing that you can use, whatever is available, if you have extra that you set aside to use for your base coating, you can do this from your piping bag as well. But I am just starting with the container. So I'm going to cover this all up in a second. I'm going to put some frosting all around. And I'm using my spatula here just to spread a nice even layer on not too thick just a really thin layer my our personal preference in my family is that my kids don't really like a ton of icing they find I find that they scrape it off um especially with the prepackaged one because it's very sweet that we do when I make when I make my own buttercream my own scratch recipe so I could do a thicker layer of that because it's not quite as sweet um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we use the pre packaged one. This is Wilton brand uh, buttercream or frosting. Doesn't technically contain any butter, so it is really a frosting and not a buttercream. So there, my cupcakes have a, a base coat on them. So the next step is to talk about how do we put this this cup of frosting, right? We can't, we can't pipe this. This, this, cup, this cup is not pipeable in its current form. But we need to put it in this piping bag, right? So if we open up the piping bag and we were to take the tip that we have and put the tip on the outside of the piping bag, it's gonna fall off as soon as we apply any pressure. So if we put this, the tip on, for instance, and then we were to put our icing on the inside, then our um, our ice, our tip would, would pop right off. So the tip has to go inside the piping bag. So you're going to bend the edge of your piping bag over, a, you know, about halfway. <laughs> and then I like to hold it in your non-dominant hand. So I'm a righty, and I will place the piping bag, the empty piping bag, in my left hand, and insert your whatever tip you're going to use and push it down to the end so that you can see approximately where the tip ends, right? And then you can just mark it a little bit either with the bag or with your fingernail, make a little line, and then push the, the tip out of the way. And we're gonna cut the tip of the bag right where we made that mark. So we're just gonna add a little spot for our tip to tap out. So then our tip is in the bottom of our bag and it's nice and secure. If you cut too far up the bag, 
your tip will fall out when you apply pressure. If you don't cut enough of the bag, then your icing will get stuck and you won't end up with the beautiful lines in your tip because you have your bag in the way. So it's uh, trying to find the sweet spot. Um, it is salvageable if you cut too much. There is uh, something called a coupler you can put on the, in the inside of your bag. If you were to cut it too much, then your piping tip is going to fall out. Um, a coupler is something that you can add to your bag. This is, this is just an FYI, not that you're supposed to have these, but um, if you do much cake decorating, sometimes it's nice to have, this is what the coupler looks like. It has an inside piece and an outside. So this would go inside the bag and then your bag goes over, right? And then the tip would actually go on, on the outside in this case, because you use this little ring to screw it on. So if you were going to do a lot of decorating and you have a couple of colors that you were going to change, but you wanted to alternate tips. This is a nice tool to be able to use to switch tips without refilling your piping bag. So you could put this piece in your piping bag, very similarly to how you just added that star tip, I'll show you. And the, the piping tip would go on the outside in that piece. The only time the, the piping tip is gonna go on the outside of your bag is when you're using a coupler. So. That's just how, how this one looks. The tip would go on the outside and the ring goes over. But we're not gonna use that because not everybody has that snake. But that you can find in the baking section at Michael's or Walmart. They have them sold in, in big packages. So you can add that to your collection. And you find it's useful if you're doing uh, a big project. So I'm gonna take that bag. I put my tip in the end and I'm going to hold it in my left hand. And I fold the edge of the piping bag over my hand kind of protect it be like that and now i'm going to take my frosting and i'm going to fill my piping bag i like to use my thumb as a guide to help scrape the frosting off so i'll take the knife or whatever spoon or whatever you're using to put your frosting in and i kind of rub it against my thumb so I can do this so you can see, um, to kind of knock the icing off into the bag so I'll take another scoop. I use my thumb as the guide. Okay. I put the, 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 the knife against my thumb and then I scrape against it. And it will help keep the icing in the bag instead of all over the top so that when you pull it up to close it, you don't end up with, with icing all over the top of the bag and the top of the bag will stay a little neater. So I'm gonna put this in there and then I haven't, I haven't used all my icing. I'm gonna reserve some so we can refill if we need to. I'm going to fold up those edges. Now the, the bottom of your bag is open. So if I push my frosting, I'm gonna squeeze it down thin and then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna twist it shut. So we twist it shut. You can tie a knot in it in your piping bag to keep it closed. If you don't fill it too much, this is a lot easier to do. If you put too much icing in, you won't be able to tie a knot. So you can secure it with a rubber band. You can just hold it closed. The challenge when you're piping is if you don't hold this bag closed, the icing will come out the top. How, how many people has that ever happened to? And you end up with icing all over your hand and it's a ginormous mess. And then you have to go wash your hands and you can't put the sink on. So you have icing all over your hands, right? So it's a lot easier to just keep that bag twisted shut. When you're going to pipe, the knot definitely helps, but you can only put about half a bag of icing in. So the knot doesn't always work if you're going to have a lot of work, uh, a lot of icing that you're going to do. So when we hold the piping bag, we're going to take again our non dominant hand. So I'm a righty, I'm going to put the icing bag. Between my thumb and my forefinger, I'm gonna make like a lobster claw. And that icing bag is gonna go right there in between those two fingers. And those two fingers are gonna stay shut. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna open them. I'm gonna take the other three fingers and I'm gonna wrap them around my bag. And that's gonna provide the pressure to push the icing out. Now, because I'm a righty, I'm gonna guide this with my right hand. If you're more comfortable working on the right side, then you can put the thumb between the thumb and the forefinger on the 
right hand side, wrap your fingers around, and you can certainly pipe that way, where it's, wherever, wherever you're more comfortable. But we're gonna set our cake cream cupcakes aside for a moment. And I would like you to take out that, um, that seat that, that was in your um, kit and your, your circle of parchment. And you're gonna lay your circle of parchment right over the patterns at the bottom, and you're gonna trace them. And this is where our practice is gonna, is gonna be tonight. You could certainly practice on another piece of parchment. You can do all the practice that you want, but this gives us a little bit of practice to try a few of these tips. So to, to do the rosette pattern, it's gonna be holding the bag at almost at 90, 90 degrees, between 90, 90 degrees and 45 degrees. Not, not to, um, don't lay it down too much. You really wanna kind of be up and, up and down straight. You're gonna put your tip down. And if you give just a little squeeze, you'll see the icing is going to flow. So if you start with a little, little bit on your, on your paper, I'm just getting my icing here at the end. So you're going to put the tip down and you're going to fair a fair even amount of pressure. You're going to put a dot in the middle and don't stop twisting. You're going to twist all the way around. And that's going to be your little rosette. So you put a dot in the middle, kind of do this closer to the camera so you can see. Dot in the middle and then twist around. And that makes your little rosette. So you don't want to pick up your piping bag. You want to make sure that your piping bag stays on, almost on top of your icing. So you squeeze out a little bit and then you twist it around. So go ahead and try and pipe a few of those. You want to put your pipe, your center of your flower, and then twist it around. You put it in the middle and you twist it around. You just like making a circle of icing, but because you're using this beautiful tip, you end up with those nice little swirly lines. So you put your icing about 90 degrees, even pressure to push that icing out, go all the way around. You end up with a little kind of rosebud in the middle, and then you twist it around to make your rosette. Questions about the rosette. All right. So now, depending on the size tip that you use, you could make big rosettes or small rosettes. You could, um, you can also use this same tip to not do the full circle. But if you just put your tip on the paper and you squeeze out and pull up, what kind of shape are you left with? Star. A star, right. So this is a star tip. So you could do a pretty decoration. You could make little flowers. You could certainly decorate the top of your cupcake with little stars. Mm -hmm. all those. Lots of choices, right? So our star tip is good for the stars, for the rosette, or for the shell pattern. So the shell is what I use a lot on a, like the border of a cake. Um, I like this for the bottom. It kind of seals the cake to the cake board. It uh, looks really pretty. And it's, again, it's one of those ones that will be a lot easier once you get into the rhythm. So the, the shell pattern is going to be a little bit more of a squeeze and pull. So you're gonna, you're gonna put your um, frosting at a, about a 45 degree angle. Again, you're not touching the paper. You're kind of hovering just above. You're gonna squeeze out the frosting and you want to go up and down. It's hard, it's hard to do this backwards. So you're going to squeeze out and go up and down and you kind of create a bump and come out. And then the faster you do it, you almost go backwards onto the one behind it in order to create the bump. So I'll see if I can get the camera up here a little bit more. So you're going to go this way. So you're going to create a bump, pull up and down, and then you do the next one, you go into that wave and come forward. So this is one of those that you should practice before you move to your cake, because once you get the rhythm, it'll be super easy. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to develop the rhythm to get the shell pattern. So I'm going to use my knife. I'm just going to scrape all of that icing back into my cup because we use parchment, so it's clean, food safe. I can use it again for decorating or to refill my bag if I wanted to. 
you can practice some more. So go ahead and spend a minute just trying to practice that, the bump and pull. You're gonna bump and then you wanna almost mound it up and then pull it down. You're gonna mound it up and pull it down. And that's, once you get the, the rhythm, it goes, it goes fairly quickly. You can see that. And Danielle, we had a request from somebody, if you could do the stars again. Yes, absolutely. So the stars, you just wanna make sure that the tip of your, um, of your bag is clean. So I cleaned off the excess of my, of my tip. And you're gonna, to do the stars, you're gonna go at a straight up 90, 90 degrees. So your bag is perpendicular to your counter. You're gonna squeeze out and pull up, squeeze out and pull up. And the amount of frosting that you let go will determine how big your stars are. So we could do a really big slot just by squeezing out more frosting. So if I do, if I do just a little bit, it'll make a little dot. And if I squeeze out a lot, it makes a bigger slot. So if you were gonna decorate the top of the piece, you were looking for a pretty flower or some design, you could certainly do a bunch of those. You could put a pretty thing, sprinkle in the middle. You could do a little collection of, um, of those stars. You could certainly take your, the beginning of the star tip like a rosette, but, but mound it on top of itself. And then it ends up like an ice cream swirl. You can see this one. So you end up with a pretty design and lots of different options. The icing in the kit, um, it's, it's shelf stable. So it doesn't have technically have an expiration date. Uh, so you could you can play with it. As long as you keep, you know, keep the ends clean, it will start to dry out if it's exposed to the air. So if you're gonna, you know, pretend, practice with the icing in the kit and then you wanna put it away, squeeze the bottom of the bag, hold it over. And then when you go to reuse it, you'll need to walk off the end because the end will be dry and, and a little crusty. But the icing itself, because it's self-stable frosting, it doesn't technically expire. A buttercream that you were gonna make at home, if you were making fresh buttercream, um, I would say, you know, it should be used within 24 hours or put in the fridge uh, because it has butter ingredients in it. But for the purposes of our cake, we're not, uh, we needed it to be self-stable, so that's why we use the, the broken stuff. All right, so if you feel like you have enough practice and you want to move to your decorating surface, whichever item you're going to decorate, we're going to actually, maybe we should, let's bring your parchment paper back. Let's do the leaves before we move on to our final decorating surface. So the green bag of frosting that was in your kit. You might need to massage it together a little to get the color separated a little bit. I mixed the color into all of the icing. So sometimes it just comes, uh, comes out a little bit. But if you mix it back together, it's no problem at all. We're going to take this piping bag and we're going to cut the end so that we're able to make the leaf shape in without using a tip. So if you had a leaf tip, in your, in your kit, it would look like this. It's a, it's a pointy end, kind of looks like a snake tongue. This isn't a tip that you would use to make leaves and you can make flowers with this. You can make a ribbon border, you can do lots of things. So it's, a, it's a, an interesting one to certainly have in your repertoire, but you don't need it. So what I found is you can make a, cut the tip of your bag. If you take your bag, and you fold it in half, just like this. So you just, I just took that triangle and I folded it right in half. Then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut that, triang that triangular cut. I'm gonna make the end of my bag look like, oh, there's Tony, there you there, there you go. So I'm gonna make the end of my, of my bag look like this tip. So you fold the bag in half, and then I'm going to position my scissors to cut toward the top of the bag at an angle. So that depending on how much you cut here will determine how big your leaf, uh, your leaf will, your leaf, leaf end will be. So I'm going to go, you know, a couple of centimeters. You want to make sure it's at a good angle. And I did it. 
So when I open it up, look at that. I have that end of my bag. So the end of my bag now has that fork end. So if you're going to hold this piping bag again in your hand and you want to hold the bag so that the two tines, the two forks, are going to be even with your, with your surface, right? Nope, I'm sorry. You want them to be up and down. You want them to be stacked on top of each other. So you're going to hold your bag so that the, the fork bag is up and down. And then you're going to, again, you're going to lay your tip very close to the paper and you're going to pull up and that's going to give you your leaf. So you let it flood out the end and you pull up. If you flood out the end and pull up and there's our leaf. And we didn't even need a fancy tip. We just cut our bag. Can you see that? So I used this tip. I made these beautiful sunflower cookies last year for Mother's Day. And I used this, um, this shape to make the beautiful petals of my sunflower. And I did them in this, this beautiful yellow color. And I did all of this. I did them in royal icing. Um, and they were, it was so easy to, to make your arrangement like this. So if you have some florals that you're doing, you could certainly um, add a few leaves to the project. Um, I don't know if you're on Facebook, if you're uh, if you're on Facebook, go ahead and like the Bite Size Bake Shop. That's the name of our online bakery. We do quite a bit of um, cakes and cookies and um, cupcakes, not just bite size items, but we do full size cakes. We do cupcake bouquets, uh, and I have one client who loves the cupcake bouquet, and I've done a, a couple for her for birthdays. I did one for an anniversary where we frost the cupcake using, I used a bigger uh, rose tip to make it look like uh, flowers. So it was like, looked like a bouquet of flowers, but it was all edible, it was all cupcakes. And then I went in and I filled in all the spaces in my cupcake with little green leaves. So it, it took up the extra space. Uh, I didn't have to, you know, use a bunch of, of like gloopy looking frosting because they look like leaves. It looked like it, it did its job. So those were our leaves. Any questions about the leaf shape? All right. So now we can set aside our practice parchment and you can go ahead and decide how do you want to cross your cupcakes? Do you want it to be um, a floral? I'm going to do one with rosettes on it. I'll do a, a little swirl. I'll make a, make a few of them on this one cupcake. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to take my, my green. Again, you're going to position the bag so that the, the tines are up and down. And I'm going to stick a little leaf in the end, right? And look at that. We have little leaves on our cupcake. So this looks particularly nice when you have a few different flowers. You just take up all that the space. So there's our, our cupcake. You could certainly do all leaves. The, um, the idea of succulents is very popular right now. So you could do a whole cupcake covered in leaves. If you layer them on top of themselves, you can build up. And doesn't that look like a beautiful little succulent plant, right? You do a, a little arrangement of all of that just by using that simple bag, the tip, right? Pinterest is a great source for inspiration, um, for trying to find ideas, things to copy. Um, you could certainly do all of your florals um, on a piece of parchment and let them dry and then move them to your cupcake. You don't have to decorate right on top of your cupcake. So there are options for transfers. Um, 
there are lots of different ways that you can do your decorating and still end up with a, a beautiful result. So I'm going to just go ahead and fill in my, um, my cupcakes. I'm going to do a little spell on this cupcake. And now, would you mind just doing the leaf again too? We had a request yeah, for that. Thank you. Yep. So the leaf, you're going to hold the bag. You want to hold your bag so that the, the tip of your icing bag is at, at uh, perpendicular to the, the counter. So that they're, they're stacked on top of each other. So then when you squeeze out, you're going to create that vein down the middle. That's what's going to be that beautiful vein. So you want your leaf to be <clears throat> up and down. If you're finding that you end up with um if your leaf looks like like a like a squiggle like a ribbon it means your bag is turned the wrong way so tilt it rotate it 45 degrees so that you have your time up and down and not side to side can you see it yeah okay so you want your Look the tip to be it, up and down. Do this at the He's not going to see my pri prior tax return. Yeah, you will. How are we going to do that? You scan it into your email. I did that today. Easy. So I'm uh, going to fill it on here. You use this and you use it. There are lots of typing tips options. Um, a, a fun way to create color and interest is if you take your piping bag and you put one color in one side of the piping bag and another color in another part of the icing bag. Or if you um, line the edge of your piping bag with a little bit of food coloring, sometimes I'll take a long bamboo skewer and I'll dip it in my, in my, in my um, color gel and I'll just paint a line on the inside of my piping bag. And then when you put your icing into the bag, you end up with these beautiful streaks of color. So if you were gonna do flowers, um, you could certainly create some of that interest. So you don't have just a one color flower. You have these flowers with, with multiple colors and dimensions. Uh, so I mentioned our Facebook page. If you go to the Facebook page and, and you look at uh, cupcake bouquet, if you search cupcake bouquet, then I, you'll see some of these images I'm talking about with the, um, uh, the flowers that have kind of a, a multiple, multiple dimension look. I'll see if I can pull up um, a picture here at the end. Um, but go ahead and put some of your icing on your cupcake or your cake. Pipe a border. See if you can get the icing to, to do what you want it to. You know, like be in, intentional about your design, right? There are lots of practice pages. If you go to Pinterest or even just Google and you Google search for the Wilton practice sheet, you can print out pages of these and just practice piping over and over and over again. Um, and then the practice is the best suggestion that I can give you for just trying. There's not really a secret. You have a good consistency icing and you're willing to practice, then you will find success. So questions about any of that? Things you want to go back over, things that weren't clear? I'm going to see if I can find a picture to show you. Um, hi. Oh, I see. Hi. I have to go to a meeting, but I did it on a plastic. I love that. Oh, thank it you so great. much. Thank you so much for the class. It was great. Oh, thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. All right, so let's see if I can find a picture. Um, there is a special set of piping tips called Russian piping tips. They come in, um, a, they're, they're a bigger size um, novel, and you're able to get beautiful bouquets. Um, you're able to do trying to find this picture for you. Um, that's the different colors. You can also take a piece of saran wrap, put the saran wrap on your counter 
and put a few different strips of icing color on the saran wrap, roll it up and stick that inside a piping bag. And then you end up with um, these beautiful streaks of color in your design. Let's see if I can find you a picture of some cupcakes. All right, so this, I don't know if you can see that picture has the two colors of frosting. That's a purple and a teal that I put right in the same bag. I put teal on one side of the bag and purple on the other. And they came out swirled. So that's a nice way to do kind of like a tie-dye cupcake. Um, Um, I mentioned the, if you streak your, the icing in your bag, I don't know if you can see that. So this cupcake has a red and a black and a white. So in this instance, I put the colored um, icing, I mean the colored gel inside my bag and then added my white icing right to it. So I ended up with the streaks of color inside the bag. So there are our choices for, um, or options for coloring your icing in lots of different ways. And I'm not finding a cupcake okay picture right now. I don't wanna drive you all crazy. Um, but if you go, if you have a minute to take a peek through our Facebook page, you can certainly wander through the pictures uh, and the posting and um, take a look for images there. Uh, if you have questions, if you think of things after the fact, my contact information is on the top of, this, of the page. Feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, give me a call. Um, I do teach classes for adults and kids on Zoom and in person, so I'm happy to come to your space um, and do decorating or classes in person uh, if you're interested in that. And we do some kids stuff in the summer. Uh, once the weather gets nicer, last summer we did it in my backyard, um, but we're sometimes at the Port Jeff Village Center in Port Jeff as well. Uh, questions? Things I can go back over? No? All right, well, I don't have anything else. If you guys don't have any other questions, uh, I'm, I would love to see your, your designs, your creations. And if there's things that you think, you know, would have liked to see that you didn't see this time, send, send those ideas to Amber uh, or to myself and we can try and cover it the next time. Does anyone want Danielle to go over um, a certain tip again or anything? And uh, does anyone want to show what they created tonight? I can hear it. Can you do this? Yeah, oh, nice. I knew you oh, would do it, Lori. Oh, that looks great. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to oh, wow. spotlight. Really turn it around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Back the door. Uh -huh. We got a heart shaped cake. Is it is it lighting up? Ooh, let me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is it somebody's birthday there? Maybe I know birthday? that looks really really festive. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Shut it away. <laughs> nice job. Anyone else? Is everybody else just listening or are you? We're working. <laughs> you no, no wrong way to cross. And you know what? If you make a mistake, <laughs> take it off and do it over again. Do it on the mouse. I had a case <laughs> that <laughs> All right, are we done with this? I didn't look I had, uh, the frosting yeah. just didn't, didn't look right. So I scraped it off and I did it again. And so, you know, it's, even at this point in the game, I would consider myself a, a seasoned mm -hmm. amateur. I'm not a professional by any means. Uh, I certainly didn't go to culinary school. I do this because I love it and it gives me flexibility to be home with my kids and uh, active in their lives, but anybody can do it. You can do it. Okay. Everybody else is hiding tonight. <laughs> I don't know where go. some of are braver. I mean, thank you, Lori, for sharing yours. That was great. So, okay, 
Well, I guess next week we have another program. So maybe we'll have, um, you know, some brave people next week. So keep practicing. Oh. You can even show us some of your piping skills next week. Um, if you did want to review anything, we did record it. So the recording will be available uh, for you for two weeks following this program. So you can go on mcpl.tv if you want to um, listen again, um, listen to Danielle as you practice. So that is an option for you as well. Um, I love the fact that Danielle mentioned to email me your ideas. A couple of people did last week. It's really helpful. Um, so, you know, we have ideas, but we'd love to hear yours as well. So that option is always available to you. Um, and you can always share what you created in any of our programs on our Instagram or our Facebook page, or you can email them to me and then I can post them on our social media. And I have to say, I got a great photo from two people that I'm then turning into a St. Patrick's Day post for tomorrow. So check that out on our Instagram and Facebook page because they made the St. Patrick's Day wall hanging program that I did. And um, I guess two people got together and made them together and they did awesome. Um, Terry and Jen, they come to a lot of our programs. So I have to give a shout out to them. And it really made my day when they sent me the photo because they said they had a lot of fun doing it. So um, if you're comfortable doing that, I would love to see it. It's 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 really wonderful to see um, what everyone is doing at home, especially when it interacts with the library. Okay, Did any anyone else before we let everyone go? Are we ready to say goodbye? <laughs> I have a question for you. What, oh, we have a yeah. question. What are some natural um, things that we can use to color the icings if we wanted to do like an all natural version rather than artificial colors? Because I'm into all natural things. Good question. Um, so the there is a line of uh, natural food dyes that you can get at Whole Foods or Wild by Nature that come in the liquid form that are um, based on flowers and uh, things like beetroot powder. You could certainly use beetroot powder or matcha powder for the reds and greens. Those are going to add a little bit of flavor to your icing as well. Uh, so just be mindful of that if you're going to go that route. Um, I find that with those natural gel colors, I don't get the same flavor. So if I have a, a couple of clients who have dye allergies, so use the natural coloring for those. Um, but you could certainly do, um, if you wanted to, flavor your buttercream with uh, fruit juice. You could do uh, strawberry pink. You could do ground up dehydrated strawberries for some of that flavor and some of that pink color. Um, blueberry juice would work the same way. It's gonna give you that a little bit of that purple color and, and a little bit of flavor. But I would add that to your, to your buttercream. And then you probably would need to add some extra uh, powdered sugar to stiffen it up if you're adding more liquid to it. Thank you. Okay, uh, Danielle, again, we thank you for your time. Um, thank you for an excellent class. And we will see everybody next week at seven o'clock if you're signed up for the Fondant program as well. Uh, just be mindful, it is a different um, meeting ID. So I'll send that to everybody um, next week. It's in the program record, but I just email everybody as well. So you can just quickly go in and get it. And I um, do it at some point tomorrow afternoon. So, uh, or excuse me, Tuesday afternoon. So I'll do that as well next week, um, but you can also find it in the program record, but for each class it is different. So- uh, When do we pick the, the supplies up for that, Amber? Uh, so if you're registered for it, you should have received a phone call Okay. Um, so it's just, you know, I know there is a wait list, so just make sure you're registered. They are available. Danielle did drop them off, off last week. So we did um, contact everybody to schedule a pickup. So um, if you have any questions, you could always send me an email if you're not sure if you're registered. Mm -hmm. We did have a limited amount of kits, of course, um, because we can only do so much, but we, we did 40, so. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, so much, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You.